As a humanist who spent a great deal of time thinking about the meaning of life, I've come to realise something. Not only does the claim that there exists some ultimate or universal sense of meaning lack all merit, but that we as people rarely source meaning from a singular place. Indeed, there seem to be many places from which we take our meaning, that which gives our life significance. We seek meaning in our experiences, our dreams and our relationships to name three general places a lot of us take said significance from. Now today I wanted to talk a little more on the first item on that list, our experiences and how they enrich our life in ways which make it worth living. I ask you to think back on your life to consider the very moments in which you've been the happiest. It doesn't matter what the memory consists of, It could be early memories of playing in a certain spot that's always brought great joy, such as the beach. Maybe you recall the ecstatic rush of excitement as you looked under rocks in hunt of crabs and other creatures that held your fascination. Or maybe it's the time you finally drew enough courage to ask out the person who had, up to that point, been your best friend. The twang of fear you felt that washed away in a euphoric relief when they replied, Yes. Perhaps it's of the time you found some token which belonged to a beloved family member who's sadly no longer with us. The way that as you sat there, holding it, you suddenly began to feel a wave of warmth and comfort as the token drew together all of the fondest memories you had of that person, like a memory junction. The point I'm trying to make here is that the what doesn't matter so much. What matters is how it makes you the person feel, both at the moment and about life in general. That joy is very real and offers us a great deal of significance, particularly if we seek to share said joy. Now some may accuse me of talking about meaning and significance in a rather hedonistic fashion, a charge I'm fully prepared to accept. What I do not accept, however, is that hedonism, the pursuit of joy, is a terribly bad thing so long as one adheres to the most basic standards of informed consent. We are not machines created by some being to serve some mechanical process, whether it be working yourself to the bone or worshipping some being you've never even been shown exists. You are a human being with deep cognitive processes expressed via thoughts and emotions which come with genuine needs attached. The idea that your enjoyment of life is inherently bad seems to stem from the idea that you're a broken, sinful creature in need of redemption simply for existing. And this is a claim I thoroughly reject, as does every other humanist I have ever had the pleasure to talk to. When I look at a child who is happily playing, I don't feel the urge to step in and tell them that what they are doing is wrong because it fails to adhere to some misguided desire to live a life of self-flagellation. I see a child making the most of the one life we're guaranteed to have. And in that, I see meaning, not simply in respect to the child and their experience giving their life meaning, but also in the fact that I get to witness their joy, which, through the wonderful process of human empathy, allows me a joy of my own. And so I want to create a world that nurtures that. I want to live in a world that strives for joy. And I think in doing that, we begin to see a change in not only how we see our own life, but the life of others around us. We can move beyond this petty culture which argues that unless a person is starving themselves of every joyful experience, they don't need support. That that coffee or that pizza a person treats themselves to now and again shows a lack of will, of true desire to escape a difficult situation. It doesn't show a lack of will to get out of their current predicament. It just shows a refusal to stop living to the fullest extent of the word. It's the refusal to give in and simply subsist in life, if you can call that life. If that treat is what allows that person to get out of bed and carry on because it's one of the few brief moments of joy they managed to scrape in life, then good for them. They deserve not just that, but every ounce of our unending support to lift them out of such a situation and give them a life with more opportunity and freedom. And through coming to acknowledge this, we see that the true selfishness comes not in wanting to experience joy, but expecting others to sacrifice all joy in the pursuit of some perverse notion of duty. A significant life requires an amount of self-care. In his essay, In Praise of Idleness, 
Bertrand Russell discussed the way in which we as a society have some very strange ideas about what we consider a good way to spend one's money. Russell in his thoughts noted how someone who spends their money to give their friends a good time on philanthropic endeavours is often looked down upon as frivolous or foolish. Yet someone who spends their money on a doomed investment, not only harming themselves yet everyone else involved, will often be viewed as a victim of circumstances. And yet the financial results of both are the same. Just in the case of the gay spendthrift, as Russell puts it, the amount of happiness has hopefully increased, whilst in that of the failed investment, it has likely decreased. Of course there are caveats here on the ways that a good investment benefits people, it's always good to maintain a safety net, but working for work's sake and saving for saving's sake just makes no sense when the very same money could help improve the lives of so many, including the person working and saving. Another thing we learn from our experiences is the way in which their very limit, the fact that they pass, in no way devalues said experiences. We may long for more of such an experience, but I doubt many of us would long for an eternity of it. Just consider how many TV series ended up overstaying their welcome, becoming stale and seemingly losing the magic they originally had. It would seem that there is indeed something to the expression, too much of a good thing. Thankfully, we don't have just the one good thing to live for. There are so many experiences out there for us. So if you find a specific one is losing its edge, do not despair. Try something new. Mix things up a little. You never know, you may be pleasantly surprised and even come to appreciate the original good experience more in doing so. I guess the content of this video could be summarised in the expression treasure your memories. After all, it is the very same experiences that shape us into who we are. Trust me when I tell you that their impact is not just felt in you, but those around you whose life is greatly enriched by your very existence. Even if you don't realise it, these past experiences have already given your existence deep significance in that regard. There will never be another person with all the same experiences as you. You are unique and valuable to those in your life. And as you begin to appreciate the memories you hold more and more, this can in turn help you in figuring out your future dreams. Though that I feel is a topic best left for another video. I hope you've enjoyed this short discussion on how to discover meaning through experiences. I know both Edita and I would love to hear some of your fondest memories, so why don't you share them down below? This is the two of us wishing you all the best. Take care now. Hi there, I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, Alexia Richardson, John Schoenrock, Alexander Williams, and Daniel Martinez. Your support has ensured this channel is ability to grow over the years and really is the only thing that manages to keep the channel afloat. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe and follow Essence Support on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, an organisation dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilising language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's keep this space one which upholds the humanist values. Thank you.